Hey guys, Mr. Jalapeno here with another home maintenance tip. And on today's project, I'm going to show you how I repaired this window sill here or window stool. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I'm just going to call it a window sill. The client had some plants here on the window. It got a little bit of water damage, so I'm going to show you how to repair it. So first thing I did is I prepped with some blue tape and then I laid down some plastic. That way I don't make a mess. I then grabbed 120 grit sanding paper and a little bit of elbow grease. But I started to notice that there was still a little bit of bumps there, as you can see right here. So I needed a little bit more power. That's where this random orbit sander comes in handy. That way I don't have to use too much elbow grease. I'm still using 120 grit, that way it's not too rough, but it's also not too fine. All you have to do is just glide it over that windowsill to get rid of those little bumps and stuff and all the little imperfections. Quick question, what do you think is easier, to just replace this windowsill or to do what I'm doing here? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I'm going to wipe off that sawdust, that way I could check with my drywall knife and see if there's still any bumps here. And as you can see here, my drywall knife is dancing a little bit, that just means there's still a little bit of bumps, so I'm just going to sand it down again, just be careful not to create a big old crater. And once I see that there's no bumps, I'm just going to go ahead and vacuum all that sawdust that way I have a nice clean smooth surface to work on and the product I'm going to use to smooth everything out here is called ready patch and I'm just going to use my drywall knife to apply the ready patch I always recommend to do super thin coats when applying this ready patch because this stuff you know it takes quite a bit to dry compared to the bondo and the reason why I'm not using bondo for this repair is because usually bondo I use for like big holes or gouges on the wood this time it's it's not that big but the, I mean the ready patch works here the first coat dried in about 30 minutes so I just went ahead and sanded it down a little bit and once I was done sanding down that first coat I applied the second coat again remember super thin coats the second coat usually takes about half the time compared to the first coat just make sure to wipe off any of the excess ready patch that way you don't have to wait for that stuff to dry too long it also helps to have a fan if you need it to dry a little bit quicker and just remember you could get most of the stuff that I'm using here in this project at Home Depot or you could go to my Amazon storefront which are affiliate links if you're kind enough to use them. It's a good way to help support the channel at no extra cost to you. But anyways, as you saw there, I bought that little sander, but it came with 120 grit sanding paper. I just changed it to 220 because it's going to be a little bit smoother. If I was to use that 120 grit sanding paper, it'll scratch up the windowsill, which I do not want. So I strongly recommend that you use 220 grit sanding paper or up. And if you're getting any value from this video, don't forget to follow and subscribe for more content like this. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. And after all that, it is now paint time. The client luckily did have the paint. It was a little bit dirty, but if you have a paint screen, you can make it brand new. I'm also going to be using a paint roller to apply the paint. But before that, I'm going to add a little bit of Floetrol. This helps with brush marks and roller marks, so I really recommend it. Oh, and it also helps with the texture that the roller leaves behind. And so before I strain the paint, I'm going to put on these latex gloves. That way my hands don't get full of paint. All you have to do is just squeeze that paint out and all the trash is going to stay inside the strainer. I'm also going to mix up that paint really, really good. Remember, I did add a little bit of Floetrol, so just make sure you mix it a lot there. And obviously, you don't want to make a mess with that strainer. So what I like to do is just kind of cover it up with the latex gloves I always like to keep the mess to a minimum so this stuff really helps out and to apply this paint like I said I'm gonna be using these four inch quarter inch rollers these are meant for smooth surfaces that way it looks like it's been sprayed and all I have to do now is just apply the paint again just be careful not to apply the paint on too thick it's always best to do thin coats like I keep mentioning that'll just help make it look nice and smooth so I ended up doing three coats of paint one primer and two of the windowsill color if you end up needing to do more coats of paint just go thin and you should be good another thing you could do but it's going to take more prep work is you could actually spray it and I do give him that option but like I said it is a little bit more prep work and I have to clean my sprayer which is going to take just a little bit more time but at the end of the day this method actually looks pretty good in my opinion just don't forget to add that flow trawl that way it thins out the paint a little bit so it doesn't look too textury what do you think would you have rather rolled it sprayed it or heck even brushed it Overall, as long as the client is happy with the end result, that's ultimately what matters to me. I just have to make sure I set clear expectations, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Jalapeno Solutions. Boom!